Hi, this is Kim from Emerging Creatively Tutorials, and this is ECT TV episode 65. So, in today's episode, I am going to show you how to make this necklace. It's really simple. Um, it is an arrowhead, which you know, probably isn't a real arrowhead, chances are it's not, um, and leather, and um, a simple wire wrapping technique to kind of um, attach a leather, which I'll show you shortly. But you can use this episode as inspiration in kind of a few different ways. So maybe you don't have an arrowhead. <laughs> Chances are you don't. Um, you can use the techniques I show you for other things. I recently was on vacation and this arrowhead is one thing um, I purchased. In fact, I know it's not a real arrowhead because I don't even think you're allowed to actually purchase real arrowheads. Um, however, um, I purchased it. It's cool. It's fun. Um, it reminds me of my vacation and also reminds me of my heritage. So you may not, at first glance, be able to tell this, um, but I do have Native American blood in me um, on my father's side. I look just like my mother, and I look probably more like her Irish heritage. <laughs> and, um, and my father um, is from German descent, and Native American. And from what I understand, um, it is the Mohawk tribe. And while we were driving from one spot to another, we happened to go through the Mohawk um, reservation, and it was so inspiring for me. Now, I got this faux arrowhead at a cavern, which was amazing, the Secret Cavern in New York. If you're ever interested, it is a really cool quirky cave. It's real fun to go to. The people there are great. Um, and that's where I got the arrowhead. So it is a souvenir of my trip. It's also kind of homage to my heritage. And it's also a real fun technique to use. So I'm going to show you how to make this necklace, but I encourage you to kind of think about ways you can either incorporate souvenirs from your uh, trips or if you prefer um, to think about your heritage and maybe what sort of items might kind of give homage to your heritage and just think about it that way. It might be colors, it might be gemstones, it might be actual, um, you know, artifacts or reproductions of artifacts, um, whatever it is. Just kind of think about that and think about how you could maybe incorporate that into your jewelry making or into your art. And if you really like um, kind of making souvenir type jewelry, even if you don't you know, go on vacation, but maybe you just take a walk around your town, um, I have a free mini e-course. Um, it's a Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry free mini e-course. It's kind of set up like my um, full e-course, but it's completely free. You just sign up for an email and then you um, get taken over to the mini e-course and um, you will make a souvenir charm bracelet and you'll learn how to do that there. So um, go on over and check that out when you're done watching this video if you're interested in that. So let's get started. So here are the tools and materials you'll need for this particular project. And as I mentioned, you can use this episode in several ways. So you might ha not have an arrowhead, um, but some of the other techniques might be helpful for you. So I have an arrowhead, which may or may not be a real um, authentic arrowhead. I don't know for sure. Um, but it, and either way, it is really cool and I want to make a necklace out of it. I will be using leather. If you don't like leather, you can use cotton cord for the same exact technique. I'm using a nice flat kind of square leather. Um, this, the main technique I'm going to be showing you works even with round cord. So either way, it works. Um, You'll need 22 gauge half hard round wire um, and I find the 22 gauge works best for um, 
the wire wrapping of the cord that I'm going to show you. Um, but if you have other, if, say you have 20 gauge, it will work too. It's just not quite as easy. Then you're going to need some jump rings. You'll need about four actually, and a clasp. Or if you prefer, um, you wouldn't necessarily need to use a clasp. You could just tie the cord um, you know, behind your neck instead of using a clasp. That's up to you. I'm going to use a clasp because um, it feels a little more secure to me. And then the tools that you'll need are scissors, or whatever will cut your cord, wire cutters, and that's for cutting the wire. And then you'll need some chain nose pliers and bent nose pliers. And that's, and that's just for opening and closing the jump rings. So let's get started. So I'm going to start by cutting about six inches of my leather cord. And then we'll need more later, so we'll just put it to the side for now. Now I'm just going to thread my two jump rings. And I don't think I mentioned, I'm using seven millimeter jump rings. So I'm just kind of threading them on to the cord. And we'll adjust where they go in a second here. And now I'm grabbing my arrowhead, and um, there's usually kind of a flat side and a front side, um, or at least there is on this one. Um, it, it choose which side you want to be the front, and then we're, we're going to wrap the cord around from the front to the back. Um, so just kind of find the middle, and we'll just kind of wrap around. And I'm just trying to keep the, these two um, jump rings kind of on the side. We can fix it in a minute though. And then, okay, so I have wrapped kind of to the front. Now I'm on the back here. And we're going to bring the ends back around to the front again. And But what I'm going to do is on each side I'm going to pull um, the end through the jump ring again. And this doesn't look very graceful on this video, I know, and it isn't very graceful, <laughs> but it will be fine. And now on airheads, you know, they kind of come in, so there's a little notch to, that you can easily wrap this around. If you're using some other sort of object, um, you might not be able to do this so easily, but basically anything that has a nice notch where you can put the cord in. Um, and keep it there from, and it doesn't slide around, this would work. All right, and then I'm bringing the other side through that jump ring as well. And then you can kind of adjust it so your ends are sort of even. And now I just want to kind of adjust these jump rings. Now, it doesn't look really nice when they're like right in the side and it's hard to get them in that little notch anyway. So they're kind of on the back see if I can show you better. Um, on the sides, but in the kind of behind um, the arrowhead. And now I'm just going to tie a knot, uh, just a simple, I think it's just called an overhand knot, square knot. So just do it twice. And you can kind of try to straighten it out so the uh, ends kind of come out to the side a little bit, but it kind of goes where it wants to go. And just make sure everything's kind of where you want it and pull really tightly and pull this knot nice and tight um, so that, you know, it's holding and it's not going to come undone. If you have a little glue, you could put a dot of glue in the knot before you do the second one. I'm not really a big fan of glue, so I don't do that. And I'm just going to trim off the ends kind of at an angle. And I like the way that um, the knot looks in the front. If you don't like that look, you could kind of tie it in the back. So that's kind of the basic pendant part of it. And now I'm going to show you the next technique. So we're going to add a cord um, for the necklace part, and I'm just going to use this leather again. And this is where our um, 22 gauge wire comes in. 
so I'm going to cut, let's kind of put this up here, about five inches of wire. And I'm going to make a flush cut on each side. And we'll trim off the ends anyway, but I'm just doing it just to make sure. And pull that off to the side. And so, going back to the leather cord, um, we're going to just slide it in through the jump ring and kind of fold it over. And I have about an inch and a half or two inches of overlap here. Um, we'll trim off excess uh, leather when we get done wrapping the wire around, um, but I like to just have a little bit extra to play with. And now just can I get this arranged in whatever way feels comfortable for you. And we're going to start wrapping the wire around the leather. So I just like to hold about an inch of wire um, in my hand, and I just kind of hold it in my left hand, and then I wrap around with my right hand. And so I just, I like to start about, it's about a quarter of an inch, and then work my way in, um, however it feels comfortable to you, you can do. And we're just kind of wrapping the wire around, pulling tightly, and just making wraps one next to the other. And I'm just kind of straightening it up as I go. If you find that your wraps are not close together, you can simply take your chain nose pliers and put, put, put on either side of your wraps, pinch them together. And just kind of finish this up. So I've gone around a few times. Um, just make sure everything feels tight. Um, I like to kind of just pull um, to make sure it's secure. And then with this little end over here, um, I'm just going to kind of pull it across the cord. And again, I'm just going to pull everything close together. And then we're going to trim off the excess, um, and you want to do it on the top, um, kind of in the middle of this cording, so it doesn't actually scratch your, you know, your neck when you're wearing it. And we'll make a flush cut for that. And um, a flush cut, you just make it with the back of your, most wire cutters, um, kind of the back flat side, it makes a f nice straight cut. Um, if you do it the front side toward what you're cutting, it makes a pinch cut. Um, and we want a flush cut. Alright, so then we're just going to take our chain nose pliers and make sure the ends are secure and not sticking up. And then I'm just going to trim off the excess cord here. So it'll be a little bit sticking out, and that's fine with me. And I just noticed my end is not flat, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fix that. Right. Okay, so now um, you just want to figure out how long you want your cord to be. Um, and cut it, and then just repeat the exact same thing on the other side. So I like to just sort of hold it up to my neck, figure out how it's going to hang, um, like where I want it to lay, and then um, cut the cord from there, and then you can just do the same thing on the other side, um, the exact same procedure as we just did. Okay, so I have completed the wire wrapping on both of these cords. Um, so now we have a necklace here. And we just need to end it. Uh, now, if you want to just tie it around your neck, um, just make sure you leave enough um, leather cording to be able to make a tie um, around your neck. And if you want to do a clasp, then I'm going to show you that now. I'm just going to trim these so they're the 
seam. And then we're just doing exactly what we just did. Um, we're going to add a jump ring and fold over the leather and then um, do the wrapping again. So just like we just did, just like I just showed you, it's the exact same technique. Nice and tight to keep everything nice and neat. And then trim off the excess wire. And actually, I'm going to just kind of smush this all together. So all my wraps are nice and tight together. And then just trim off the excess wire kind of on the top part in the middle of the leather or whatever cord you're using. And then just make sure the ends are not poking out. And then you'll do that on the other side as well. Okay, so now I have both sides done. I have um, jump rings on the end of each of these. So now I'm just going to attach a clasp to one end and then on the other end I'm just going to add an extra jump ring. So we just need to open a jump ring. So I'll show you how to do that. Um, you will need bent nose pliers and a pair of chain nose pliers or two pair of pliers, whatever you have. Um, not round nose pliers, just anything that's flat on the inside. Find the little slot um, the little opening in the jump ring and then center that in between your two pair of pliers. And then you're not going to do an out motion. You're going to pull one pair of pliers towards you and one away from you and just open up the jump ring um, and maintain the circle. Um, just open it though. So um, we're going to attach that to one side and close it. And to close it, you just do the same thing but in the opposite. And I like to go by um, past the point of closing a few times to kind of harden up the jump ring. And then on the other side, we're going to add the clasp. And actually, before we do that, I wanted to mention um, you want to kind of work the clasp first. So that just means kind of opening it about 10 times just to make sure it's not going to fail. Um, a lot of times, especially, well, basically this is if you're using a lobster clasp. Um, sometimes you'll get a pack of like 100 or something and some of them uh, don't actually work, but sometimes you don't notice it right away. But if you open up your clasp several times before you put it in, on your jewelry project, your necklace, your bracelet, um, then you can be pretty certain that it's going to be fine. So I'm just adding that to the other side and closing it. And now we have this awesome necklace. I hope you liked learning how to do this. Um, this is a really simple necklace, but I think it's beautiful. It speaks to my heritage, and it's a reminder of my recent vacation. But for you, um, I hope it taught you a couple of different um, techniques that you can use in other pieces of jewelry, other kinds of jewelry you make, um, whatever it is that you decide to make. Um, wire wrapping, um, the and of cord so you can use cord more easily in your jewelry projects. So I have a couple of reminders for you. First of all, if you want to see step-by-step -step photos of this project, you can come over to my website at KimberlyKohler.com. Um, the link is below this video. Secondly, if you want PDFs of future ECT TV episodes, I send them out to my newsletter subscribers each week as I publish the newsletter. So you want to sign up for my newsletter, um, and you can do that over at KimberlyKohler.com, um, and the link is below this video as well. 
And then finally, I just wanted to mention, I have two wonderful, awesome classes coming up that I love to teach. They are called Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry, and the other one is Inspired eCourse. They will recharge your creativity, give you tons of inspiration. Um, you can take one or the other class, or I, right now, for now, I have a bundle, um, depending when you're watching this. I only teach these classes twice a year. So this is the last time for 2016 that you can take either one of these classes. Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry is a six-week class. Each week you get a creativity booster, so it's basically a creative activity um, to help you boost your creativity. Then you get jewelry making kind of skills lessons, so back to basics type of lessons. Um, and they're not all basic lessons, um, but they're all jewelry making lessons. And then there are jewelry projects that go along with that week's theme. So you might be inspired to make your own jewelry, and if so, I encourage that. Um, but if not, I have projects for you to refer to, or you can use my projects as a base and then uh, do your own thing. So, Inspired eCourse is a four-week class. Each week you get a creative activity and journal prompts. And then we go through taking the inspiration out of your art journal pages, kind of making a map for your jewelry, sketching jewelry, um, you know, getting inspired and getting ideas, and then actually making jewelry. I also give you projects in that class, but I highly encourage you to make your own jewelry projects, especially in that class. So you can get either one of those classes or you can get a deal when you do a bundle. I have payment plan options, um, but all of that is kind of time sensitive. Class starts with the Rediscover Your Creativity and Make Jewelry on June 6th. Um, as of that date, you will no longer be able to get the bundle or Rediscover Your Creativity um, or the payment plan um, for Rediscover Your Creativity because it will close. And then you can still join in for Inspired eCourse after that because um, it does not actually start until July at the end of Rediscover Your Creativity. So one class falls right after the other. You can learn all the details over on my website, um, everything you need to know about the classes, um, and I'll have the links below for those classes. And I will see you in a couple of weeks with a brand new episode of ECT TV. Until then, have a wonderful, inspired life.